There is a spiritual reality yeah. that has invaded this world in Jesus, in God, in the kingdom of God, that if we don't take time to pay attention to it, we will miss it. Are you living the life you've always wanted? How do you know? Are you closer to Jesus than you were before? Do you see yourself growing in grace and the knowledge of Christ? In this series on spiritual formation, longtime friends Jim and George address these questions and more. Join us as we talk about the essential things needed to live the life God intended for us to live. The persons we become is the most important thing that God gets out of our lives and what others get as well. Dig in with us and let's learn to become Christ-like from scripture and from the lives of many of the church's teachers. Here we go. Well, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good to see it's you. It's still George. morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is uh, morning. October. It is. It's starting to get cool. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. It's finally. Yeah. It's that time of the year where fall is happening. Things slow down. Uh, and you be, I personally become a lot more reflective in the winter. Mm. Mm -hmm. than I am in the spring and summer when everything is demanding so much attention and work and all of that. But the fall is, is a time to reflect. And we want to talk about a particular way to reflect on our days that can be a habitual way for us to uh, get in touch with our lives yeah. and discover where God has been at work in our lives. Yeah. So it's a practice, and it has a name. It yeah. It has a Latin name. Yeah. Examen, which uh, E-X-A-M-E-N, X and amen, examen. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's a practice that, that dates uh, back a long, long, long time. And it, it's been practiced by the church all of these centuries, and uh, it's been rediscovered of late with, with so many people. Yeah. And it's a very helpful way of understanding where I am, what's happening in my life, how God is at work, how am I experiencing God. And, we, you know, we've talked about all these disciplines and all of, all of them are means of letting us know God is here. Yeah. Yeah, examine has been, I think... You know, I, I try to be careful about adding new practices um, because they can fill up life quickly if, you, if you're not attentive to that. But examine has been one I've added yeah. uh, over the last five years and probably been the most formative practice mm. for me. How so, uh, Jim? Yeah, I think I started, I got familiar and introduced to it, probably through you, um, through, you know, just some of the resources that we tap into, um, learning some from the church fathers and, and people that have been in multi-streams of the church. Yes, yes. <clears throat> it, it, it kind of came to me during a pretty challenging ministry and life season, and I think it came as a result of just a need. You know, there's a lot of challenges being thrown at on a daily basis uh, at me. And so to be able to practice this discipline <clears throat> on a daily basis mm -hmm. was a really, really helpful way of, well, we'll get into it, but, yeah. but really just meaningful and something I'm still, it's, this is one of those that hasn't been difficult for me to stay committed yeah. to because yeah. it, I know it's important. Yeah. Yeah, my, I, that's that's really yep. good, um, <clears throat> and it's not a belabored, you know, uh, discipline. It's something that you can do in a short period of time. That's right, and uh, it, it's just a helpful way. It really is, yeah. and it's a it's a practice. But as we've noted on most of of these ways of means of grace, ways and means of grace. It's not just a practice, it nurtures a way, a way in us, of, and of it being. certainly has That's done That's right, that. that's right. So I want to begin with a, with mm. a quote okay. from a famous philosopher from 2,500 years ago, <laughs> and this is Socrates. Good old Socrates. Yes. 
And in Plato's Apology, a book that, that he's written, where he was responding against slander, that he is influencing the youth um, into becoming impious kind of people. Mm. Um, and the youth that needed to be corrected. Okay. And he makes the statement in the middle of this apology. So it's a statement of correction? So a statement of, he says, the unexamined life is not worth living. How does that? Wow. How does that? <laughs> strong. How does that hit you? It's, it's pretty strong. The unexamined <clears throat> life. And then he's not the only one who's made it. There's, there's been hundreds after him who kind of affirm this they've, kind they've of... They've been retweeting it for a couple they've been, of minutes. That's right. <laughs> How, yeah, the unexamined life is not worth living. Uh, something about that, that. I mean, it's not so much that it's too strong, but I don't like it mm -hmm. um, much. And um, because a life is worth living. Yeah. A, yeah. Unexamined or not. But he makes a great point in that it's not worth it in that if we're not, re you know, someone once, maybe you, George, said, we're not changed by our exp experiences. We're changed by the reflections on our, experiences. on our experiences. And I think an unexamined life is the, the life we have is still a treasure. Mm -hmm. Every day we get to get mm -hmm. up and put our shoes on. But we're missing so much yes. of it yeah. if we're not practicing. That's such a great quote, Jim. I'm, I'm sure I'm not the author of it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I borrowed it from someone and, and said it. Yeah. You know? um, we are changed by reflection on our experience. Yeah. And that's what examine is. Yeah. It's a time to reflect on our daily experiences. Yeah. 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 I want to just for a r real quick minute pause on that because... Most of us, I bet, are familiar with living not without e examining the way we're living. Yeah. We can get so caught up Correct. in hurry mm -hmm. and productivity and become experienced junkies. We're looking for the next whatever it is, whether it's a ball game or a vacation or yeah. time off, you know, or the next challenge at work or the next relationship. That if that's all we're doing is sort of leapfrogging from one experience, yeah. even in the spiritual life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we won't grow from those. No. We we'll no. may become addicted to them, but we won't grow very well, maybe is a better way of saying yeah. it, from, for yeah. not examining mm -hmm. them. So yeah, yeah. this is an important one. So I've got three or four things I want to say about that, and then yeah. maybe maybe kind of go through a little bit of an experience okay. of examine. Oh, if time cool. allows us, right. yeah, it would be good. Go for it. Um, so first thing I would say, life is only worth living if we evaluate our life, think over our actions and events. Like our life becomes um, this kind of practice makes life more worthy to be lived, mm. right? That's a good it's, way of saying that's it. That's right. Yeah. It adds a, a, uh, something to life, like an examination, that makes it really worthwhile. That's good. To look at. Yeah. What, I, what I'm hearing you say is it's a way of valuing yeah. and treasuring yeah. the life we've been given. Correct. Correct. By Stepping yeah. aside from it in a way and looking at it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you, you can say it this way. The examined life is really worth living. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, right. It's more worth living than the unexamined Why well, didn't Socrates life. say it that way? I know. I, I just, know. Uh, it's, you know, probably philosophically he can argue that. Yeah. You know, like if you don't examine your life, like what are you learning from it? Right. You're just going through the motions. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. Once you when you stop and examine and look inside and get to know yourself and get to know God, then you're getting what life is designed to give yeah, you. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Um, uh, if we evaluate our life, think over our actions and events with an emphasis on how did we behave that day? 
what were some of the reasons? Were they right? Were they wrong in some of the actions and words that we said? Mm -hmm. uh, we would gain a lot of um, understanding. That's right. Right? Absolutely. And questioning ourselves, our experiences, our thoughts, our feelings, questioning the world. Um, this, is, this is one of the greatest gift that, gifts that God has given humanity as opposed to all the rest of his creation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, earthly creation. Yeah. The ability to reflect. You know, animals don't do that. Yeah, that's right. Any other yeah. form of life on this earth is not reflective, hmm. right? Yeah. You never see a dog sitting on the, on the couch or sitting on the, uh, on the deck. Uh, With his paw underneath his chin. That's right. <laughs> reflecting on what is life bringing me? What is my yeah. life like? Yeah. What did I experience that day? Yeah. That's just not part of the kind of life that they have. But we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're built for this kind of life. That's what makes us human. We are reflective people. Yeah. We can think about our thinking. Yeah, that's right. Think about our thinking. Yeah. 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 And this practice is simply a way of placing that yeah. in a daily way in our life. Yeah. We are God's image. We are the image of God. We're not just we don't just bear his image, we are, we, we are the actual image of God, mm -hmm. as some Old Testament scholars would want to translate that mm -hmm. passage. And, and that means when God comes to us and asks us, where are you? He's inviting us uh, to do some good. thinking about our thinking. Uh, yeah, he has a history of saying that, doesn't yeah. he? Where are you? Where are you? Yeah. What's happening to you? Yeah. What are you experiencing? Where have you been? Can you look back and, and discover some of that? Yeah. It's such an invitational question, like, yes. right? Not what have you done wrong, mm -hmm. but where are you? Yeah, what is going on? What is going on? And yeah. I think that's what helped me. You know, like I mentioned earlier, I was really introduced to this practice during the challenging season and where our culture was becoming increasingly divided mm -hmm. and politicized yeah. and so many like big issues that we're trying to figure out and sort out. And this practice really helped me bring to reflect on that day as I was trying to interact with people that were in those in, in those issues, myself included and making decisions. Mm -hmm. But paying attention to my reactions from the day yeah. and say, what was going on there yeah, when I was yeah. angry or fearful or felt unsure? Yes. or it's, uh, it's not that I always got the answer, but the, <sighs> the examination of those, not just feelings, but responses throughout the day is yeah. just proven so invaluable. We make hundreds of decisions every day. Absolutely. And we have multiple yeah. <laughs> hundreds of thoughts and reactions and yeah. those kinds of things and and we never examine them then we're losing good opportunities to learn and to grow yeah absolutely yeah. 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 Um, well here's another uh, thing we can say in relationship to this practice you know, of examine is life has meaning because Jesus lives. Hmm. Now, and it, 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 it's not directly connected to this, hmm. but... It's like a uh, yeah. Gaither family song to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the idea behind this is that uh, reality itself is not just physical. Hmm. It's more than physical. It's metaphysical. There is a spiritual reality yeah. that has invaded this world in Jesus, in God, in the kingdom of God, that if we don't take time to pay attention to it, we will miss it. Oh, so good. Yeah. We will miss it. To try to examine our lives through that That's reality. Right. Uh, yeah. Jesus says God is acting in this world. And if we don't take time to reflect on where and when and how, yes. 
uh, we're missing a huge so much uh, opportunity yeah. to grow. Yeah. And in fact, uh, can I say something strong? Yeah. If we're not examining, I mean, we're like right now we have a big election coming up in our country, mm-hmm. and if we're failing to do this yeah. on a, on a regular basis. The chances are really high. If I'm not doing that, the yeah. chances are really high. I'm missing a meaningful and maybe in the sight of God critical dimensions yes. of whatever yeah. issue. And if I'm just getting fired up from the latest podcast or article mm-hmm. or news cycle, yeah. and I am not paying attention to my own responses as well as those circumstances, the you chances are really good. Yeah. I am not seeing this from God's yeah. perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, we can we can know where God has been at work in our lives. Mm. Yes, by just taking the time yeah. to study our day. Yeah, not not belabor every aspect of mm-hmm. it. But just to look at our day yeah. in in chunks of time, yeah, and discover. Yeah, what, that's right. Yeah. yeah, it's a good point. Like we, <coughs> none of us has the time or energy. Yeah. We'd drive ourselves mad if we were trying to analyze every yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not what we mean. Don't hear that. Yeah, uh, this is this is not become so inward focus. Mm-hmm. This is just bringing ourselves before the Lord. Both some people really enjoy this most in the morning. Sometimes for others, it's at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think either way is great. For me, it's at the end, um, at the end of the day. That yeah, you know, yeah. as I'm going yeah. to bed. But yeah. Well, here's a third point to say <clears throat> okay. about it. Theologically, for me, examine resides inside repentance, hmm. and we are called to repent on a regular basis. Yeah. When Jesus says, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand, he's asking us to think about the way we have been thinking about yeah, things. Yeah, And the very fact that it's an imperative, repent. and it's a continuous present kind of imperative, like continually do this. Continually think about the, how the kingdom is coming. Mm-hmm. And so examine is a way of doing that. Mm-hmm of daily thinking about the way we have been thinking yeah. about things. Yeah, that's good. And I think it's there's a richness to thinking, not just about our thinking, but also about yeah. our emotions and our mm-hmm. reactions that day. What was m- maybe giving some attention to, what was going on in the deep part of me, yeah. you know, that I probably wasn't aware of. And yeah. and it's not just thinking about it. I'm also doing it. This, and this is the, this is the grace-filled part of it. I can do that in the presence of God. That's right. Where That's right. when I, I'm thinking about my responses that day and I realize, oh, man, I really missed it. Yeah. Or I really said a stupid thing there. Correct, correct. And, and that, that happens. But in, even if there is the kind of thing that needs some correction that maybe I need to text or call a friend saying, I'm really sorry, I said yeah. a stupid thing to you. Even in those things, there's grace. Yes. You know? Yeah. There, I'm, because I'm doing it in the presence of the Lord. Yes. In in my kingdom, in His kingdom, in which there's no condemnation. So. I really like uh, Kenneth Bailey's definition of um, repentance. Hmm. He's a scholar that has worked in the Middle East for decades. Wow. Yeah. And and has learned Middle Eastern Christianity um, very well. So he's written books like Seeing Jesus Through Middle Eastern Eyes. Nice. He wrote about the story of the prodigal son seen from a Middle Eastern perspective, Mm. those kinds of books. And he says this about repentance. Repentance is allowing yourself to be discovered for who you are. Oh, wow. Like behind repentance, what Jesus is is telling his people He's not saying feel bad about the way you're behaving. Mm-hmm. He's uh, he's discover what's going on in you with you in relationship to 
the coming kingdom mm-hmm. of God, right? He says, repent and believe the kingdom of God is at hand, mm-hmm. right? And this is what the invitation to repentance to me has become is yeah. a way to discover who I am. What am I doing? What am I being called to? How am I experiencing God? And that's an act of repentance. That's good. And that, George, that's courageous and vulnerable work. Yeah. It, to to yeah. use examine as a way of bringing ourselves before the Lord and in a spirit of repentance. Yes. Because um, we're going to discover, if we go there, that we're not always right. <laughs> Our yeah. positions need addressed yeah. and rethought through, and we need to be curious about some of you know, the patterns that have been ingrained in us. And so it can be scary. One last point, like a theological point about uh, repentance, about uh, examine. And that is the promise that grace will follow us all the days of our lives. And you alluded to it just a Mm. little bit earlier in our conversation, where grace is extended to us in those times yeah. when we are not our best, yeah. when we have disobeyed, yeah. uh, sinned intentionally or unintentionally, mm-hmm. grace is there to lift us up. That's and, right. And looking at our day with a grace lens, mm-hmm. that's, that's what God wants to give to us. Bring that grace lens to your day, and if you notice something, then deal with it. Yeah, deal with it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And then look forward to tomorrow when the grace, when you can appropriate the grace of yeah. God yeah. more fully into your life, into your conversations, yeah. into your reactions. That's vital Yeah. yeah. to this because one of the things that can happen in this practice as I'm examining the day is I see, you know, where I missed something or said something or behave wrongly or whatever. And then and my natural inclination is now going to be in the direction of shame and guilt and condemnation. Mm-hmm. And yeah. repentance pushes back on that. But but I know I'm not done. You know, sometimes it, it takes me longer because I have to not just, it's not just a matter of just, okay, grace is here. It's like, okay, Lord, we need, I need to talk to you about this because yeah. I, I've done this same stupid thing again, yeah. and and I know I'm done when I'm hearing him say in one way or the other, I know, yeah. you know, yeah. you're, you're still my beloved. That's right, and that's I'm right. I'm going to go with you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the grace of Jesus is still flowing today. Yeah. What was the term you used? We were talking about it. Oh, you said grace is always on tap. It's always on tap. Yeah, that's, that's with, really good. With God, grace is always on tap. Yeah, it didn't stop when we were saved. Mm-hmm. We were saved by grace. That's mm-hmm. that's absolutely right. Yeah, but but it doesn't. That's not all that grace gives us. Yeah, it gives us every minute of the day a way to depend on God and His work yeah. and His activity. And overcome our sinfulness. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, with Jesus, grace comes, and grace upon grace upon grace, grace multiplied. Yeah. 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 For for life. It's our only hope. For life. Well, what is it that Dallas Willard used to say? The Christian ought to burn grace (laughs) like like a jet fuel, fuel, like a jet plane burns fuel on takeoff. Yeah, that's right. Or like a rocket going into space. Yeah. Uh, burns fuel. Yeah, such a powerful yeah. analogy there. Yeah. Yeah. Well. All right. Uh, how do we? How do you like? What are some of the mechanics of, uh-huh. of this yeah. exam? Yeah. Let's get to that. Cause... People can, you know, you can find <clears throat> apps that do that. You can mm-hmm. find different. Um, well, we can recommend this app. Um, yeah. Lexio 365. Yeah. L E C T I O. Right. 365 and their evening. Devotion is a yeah, an examine yeah, that's kind right. of examine. That's one way of doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's many other ways yeah. to do it. Um, well, how do you do it? Uh, maybe we can 
see if we can talk our way through that, Jim. Okay, sure. Uh, I think the first thing that, that needs to to happen is to enter into it prayerfully, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. uh, pray for God's help. Yeah. Because there's lots of things that have happened that day, decisions, instances, events, things we've said, yeah. things we didn't do, we should have yeah. done, that we're not readily aware of. Yeah. So we ask God to help us become aware yeah. and mindful and remembering of what's happened yeah. that day. Maybe take morning, 9 to 12, or from the from when you woke up until a noon. Mm-hmm. Like take that as a chunk of time. Yeah. And, and remember maybe a highlight that happened yeah. Yeah. That, that morning. Yeah, one thing that's helpful for me, I don't do it every time, but entering the exam, and usually for me it's about 10 minutes, but yeah. enter that time with a posture. Mm-hmm. I like to kneel. Um, I usually don't stay on my knees very long, mm-hmm. but I'll start there. Yeah. And it just helps kind of ga- me gather and center myself. That's right. That's right. Practice. That's right. Yeah. So with that in mind, let's think of this morning or even yesterday, if, if you want, Jim, like what comes to mind when you when you think about that? Like, yeah, what's what's something that's happened that uh, you want to remember yeah. before the Lord? Something that actually did happen. Yeah, is something that what actually did asking? happen. Either yesterday or Gosh. this morning. Yeah, yesterday I had a really meaningful conversation mm-hmm. with uh, a person in our church community. And I knew it was meaningful when I had it. Um, but I have a lot of meaningful, I have a lot of conversations with mm-hmm. people in my line of work. It's the people. I'm with people a lot, but as I replayed the day last night, I I got to that conversation with that person. So that's what the Lord helped you remember. Yes, mostly. And, it, and f- often the, the first thing that comes to mind is what you just focus on. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You don't have to chase. No, things. you don't have to chase things. And so I, I I brought that before the Lord, and it was a it was really an encouraging. Con- you know, it wasn't like a difficult conversation. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. they are, but this one wasn't. So I just brought that before the Lord and, yeah. and uh, just thanked Him for it. Okay, so gratitude is one of those things yeah, that, that come from yeah. those kinds of uh, yeah. reflections. Yeah, because yeah. this particular thing, conversation yesterday, in some ways, was the product of years and years of hopes and, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, and so I was able to sell, be grateful and kind of celebrate that conversation and, and then kind of giving it back to Him, yeah. you know. Yeah, so. yeah. So th- this is one way to see where you experienced the Lord. Yeah. In in that in yeah. that experience. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Uh, so the next thing, and you already mentioned, you express gratitude for that experience. Yes. There may be other times where it's not gratitude you need to express, uh-huh. but confession. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, and then you you, you could do that. Yeah. And um, when, confession. Can you just? Define it just in, off the top of your head. Yeah, well, let's say you were <clears throat> with your friend yesterday mm-hmm. uh, yesterday, and you said something that hurt his feelings mm-hmm. or uh, you were harsh in your criticism of him. Uh-huh. And the Lord, during the examine, convicts you of that. Yeah, that's good. What do you do with it? Yeah. Well, you immediately confess it to yeah, the Lord. Yeah, that's and, right. And you, you seek forgiveness. Yeah. And... Maybe go to your friend and say, like like you had mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I, I, I was out of place saying yeah. that to you. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And I, I think for, at least for my tradition growing up, there was a lot of guilt and shame wrapped around confession. It wasn't on purpose, mm-hmm. but it's kind of how, you know, like you screwed up. You shouldn't have screwed up. Why are you such a screw up, you know? And confession has become something different as yeah. we've learned to walk this way with Jesus. It's naming where I'm screwed up That's in his right. presence, receiving um, what I need to receive from yeah. that. And, you know, if there's repair that needs to be done, committing to that. Yeah. I don't, I'm not saying it's a terrible thing to, to feel bad. You can feel bad about it. That's okay. Yeah. Maybe I should a lot mm-hmm. of times. But the point is, that's not the point. Yeah. It's, it's to name it, bring it before the Lord, and then move, move constructively. I want to say, like I just thought of this, like confession is happening in a context. 
in the context of confession is grace. Mm, that's good. Like it's happening inside yeah. uh, the grace of God flowing into our lives. Yeah, that's good. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I love it. Love that. Um, then you pray, <clears throat> pray over your feelings. You experience mm. certain feelings, right. certain reactions that you had with your friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you name some of them? You mean specifically yeah. in that situation? Yeah, yeah specifically I think in that situation. there is a feeling of, I don't know if this is a feeling, but it like, sort of is a hesitation. Because okay. we had the con we had the conversation because I asked a question Yeah. that I've been wanting to, or not, I haven't wanted to ask very long, but I have been thinking about with this particular person. And so just w having the just giving thanks to God that I was able to ask that question. Uh -huh. yeah. Instead of playing it safe. Yeah. And then the response, you know, was really encouraging to me because, you know, there was a little bit of a fear that there might not be the response I'm, I was Correct. hoping for. And Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's going, being with God in those. Yeah. There, there's many other feelings we could feel during any experience yeah. of the day where God has been present or we didn't invite God's presence mm -hmm. into the conversations. Uh, we can experience the light and mm -hmm. uh, we can experience rest. We can experience peace and joy and all of those kinds of things yeah. in the midst of some of the things we are recalling. Yeah. But there's also certain wrong or not, I wouldn't say wrong emotions, but other emotions, negative emotions that we can experience. Yeah. Some of those would be sadness, mm -hmm. maybe shame, yeah. maybe guilt, maybe despair. Maybe fear, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, all of those are are part of our daily experiences, yeah. and and to see like when you recall a particular thing, uh, was there a a hint of that in my yeah. experience? Yeah, right. You went in there with some fear. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what to expect, mm -hmm. right? But um, fear was not based. Yeah. In reality. Yeah, that's right. And one thing I've learned from you, George, is when you, we, the term you, we've used is when you feel defensive, <clears throat> get curious. Yeah. And I think that's true for a lot of the negative emotions. Mm -hmm. We don't have to pretend we're not having them, but to get curious with them, yeah. you know, when if, whether it's anxiety or fear mm -hmm. or being defensive, those re impulses and reactions that we can, we can yeah. have. I want you to know, Jim, I get curious every day <laughs> <laughs> yeah. about this. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm true to my name. My name is, is George, and George is pretty curious. Here's the last thing we right. want to say about it. Uh, well, the, I'll say one more thing after this. Rejoice and celebrate mm. and praise God yeah, that's good. for his presence yeah. in the midst in the of, day. of that day, yeah. of that experience, yeah. right? So important. Um, and... This is like a um, a way to recognize uh, and give glory to yeah. God. Yeah, you've you've noticed where He's at. Yeah, and He's helped you understand how you reacted. Yeah, and maybe shown you why did you react that way. Yeah, you know. Yeah, out of defensiveness. Well, and then here's the the most important part for me about uh, examine. That is, I look forward to tomorrow mm -hmm. to do better what I wasn't able to do today. Yeah, that that's that's a great benefit. If I don't think about what I've done today, I may repeat tomorrow and not even yeah think I'm doing it. Yeah, anything. that is definitely an effect, and I never think about it like that. But over time, I notice it. It, it yeah. yeah 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 it it's working. <laughs> yeah. I think a, a real benefit for me, George, just really simply, is I get to sleep. <laughs> Thinking about this. Well, I, well, not no, not so much of that is like the uh, part of it for me is the burdens of the day. I've given them back to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So, which which increases the chance I'm going to sleep good. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So you look ahead tomorrow. Um, you invite God into your tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, you ask, what do you need help with? Mm -hmm. You know, be yeah. specific about when when this happens tomorrow, God help me respond in this way. Yeah, that's right. In a way that is helpful yeah. to the person. Yeah. Um, you run through your schedule for 
the mm. day tomorrow mm. uh-huh. and um, you give that to the Lord um, and you rest in his grace and yeah. you fall asleep yeah that's right. or or you call it yeah. a day yeah uh, that's right you call it a day yeah and you know this isn't a magic this isn't a, a silver bullet um, none of the practices are human yeah are they? that's right yeah, you they're still not can silver go to bed with something on your mind because yeah. someone you love is sick or whatever you know going through something. So it, it doesn't eliminate automatically all of our troubles and cares, but it has an effect over time. We've we've been counting on a daily basis God's goodness in our lives. Yeah. And we've been giving our troubles to Him on a regular basis. And so those become routine yes. to us. So it's a, f- it's, a, it's a form of repentance. It's a form it of prayer. It's a form of examining our lives it's a form of awareness and understanding who God is, and and that kind of spans all, all yeah. the disciplines, yeah. right? It, it becomes yeah. a way. It becomes can, a way of examination. Way of yeah. That's right. That's right. We don't. We're not changed by our experiences, but by our re- reflections on our experiences. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope that you have been blessed <clears throat> by this series. Um, we would love your feedback if you have things mm-hmm. that. We haven't talked about that you'd like us to talk about in the future. Yeah. We we would love to to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, leave us a leave us a message and yeah. what do they say? Click on that bell and yeah, that's right. Let, let yeah. your friends know. Yeah. And, yep. Go soulrenovate.us that's and you right. can you can get in touch with us that way. And by the way, that reminds me. Should tell them soon. I don't have a date yet. We're going to be launching our new website. That's right. Dalton's been working really hard on that, and his, yeah. his wife, Hannah, they're, they're awesome. Yeah. And uh, so look for that. We'll, we'll definitely get the word out Correct. once we have it. Yeah. But that's going to make uh, more resources, easier accessibility yeah. to yeah. what we do at, at Renovate. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. Blessings. Thank you all. This concludes this series, which is pretty cool. And after over 20 episodes, and um, we're going to get do a few more series coming up yeah hopefully a lot more a lot more look forward to it all right take care thank you so much for listening to this episode of the soul renovate podcast any of the scriptures or resources that we mentioned in this episode will be linked in our show notes if you enjoyed this episode be sure to leave us a review and subscribe on your favorite podcasting app because it really helps us to share these conversations with more christian leaders like you And if you have any questions you'd like Jam and George to answer, you can email us at info at soulrenovate.us. Soul Renovate is a ministry of Christ First Counseling Center, and it exists to propel Christian leaders to abide in Christ and grow in His likeness. Soul Renovate is made possible by the generous support of people like you. If you'd like to support us, you can do that on our website, soulrenovate.us. And if you'd like to learn more about Soul Renovate, you can also do that on our website, soulrenovate.us. This podcast is produced by me, Dalton Huey, with the help of Gil Hara. Our cover art was designed by Hannah Huey, and our music is by The Fox's Forest. Thanks again for listening. Till next time.